One of the characteristics of the traditional Judeo-Christian God is that he knows the future. That seems to us, normal, mortal people, as impossible. Is it impossible? No, I don't think that's at all impossible, and I think there are a variety of models that one could use to explain how God knows the future. What are some examples? Well, one way to do it very easily would be if you adopted a theory of time according to which all events in time are equally real, that the difference between past, present, and future is merely an illusion of human consciousness. On this sort of view of reality, the future is as real as the past, and they all exist uh, equally um, robustly and are therefore available for God to know. So if God simply exists outside this space-time manifold, he can see, in a metaphorical way, everything that transpires in the manifold. So if you adopt this view of reality as a four-dimensional space-time block, foreknowledge is very, very easy to explain. Suppose, though, God is not outside of time, but exists in time with us. Then how does he see the future? Well, that's a very interesting way of putting the question. How does he see the future, you said? And I think, Robert, that that betrays a presupposition that uh, God's knowledge is akin or analogous to perceptual knowledge. And we, on this view, we think of God's knowledge of the future as some sort of foresight, that he, he looks ahead and sees what's going to happen, and that's how he knows it. And this kind of perceptual approach to God's knowledge, I think, does run into real problems if you have a view of time according to which temporal becoming is a real and objective feature of reality. Because it hasn't happened yet. Because there is no reality to look ahead and see. But I think that construing God's foreknowledge on the model of perception is just completely wrong. When you, when you think about God, that's terribly anthropomorphic in any case. God's knowledge of mathematical truths or ethical truths isn't based on anything like perception. Rather, I would adopt what we could call a conceptualist model of God's foreknowledge rather than a perceptualist model. A conceptualist model of God's foreknowledge would be more on the, anal the analogy of innate ideas. Uh, persons like Plato, for example, thought that we have innate knowledge of certain truths and that education is not really acquiring or learning new truths, but simply bringing to consciousness this innate knowledge that we already have. Now, while that may not be a very plausible knowledge or plausible model for human knowledge, I think it's entirely plausible in the case of God that God has innately uh, the essential property of knowing only and all true propositions. And so the way he knows the future is not by looking ahead and seeing what's going to happen. It's simply by knowing the truth value of all propositions. He knows which are true and which are false. That includes future tense statements. And so by knowing the truth value of future tense statements, God knows what's going to happen. It, it sounds like that is philosophical meanderings. Oh, and, really? <laughs> and rather than... Be, be, uh, but are those events real? They're not real. No, no, that. they're not. But, but the idea that they have to be real in order to be known is based upon this assumption of a perceptualist model of divine cognition. And that's, as I say, very anthropomorphic, uh, to think of God as sort of up there looking down and seeing what's going to happen. Rather, God as an unembodied mind doesn't really have anything like perceptions because he has no sense organs when you, when you think about it. So God's knowledge is more like the knowledge of a, an innate, infinite mind which has the essential property of knowing only and all true propositions. What does that mean, though, if God knows innately, innately uh -huh. something that I may or may not do in the future? What that means is that one of those statements is true. Either you will eat pizza tomorrow for lunch or you will not eat pizza tomorrow for lunch. One of those statements is true and one is false because they're contradictories. Right. And God has the essential property of knowing which of those 
is true and which is false. He knows the truth value of all propositions. And if you are enamored with this perceptualist model of perception... You go I back could, to the other... Well, no, what, I, what I'll say in that case is that propositions exist in the present. And so God can just look at the proposition and see what its truth value is in the same way that he can look at a dog and see what color the dog is. It has the property of being brown rather than the property of being white. God can look at these propositions and see which ones have the value true and which have the value false. So In the present. Yeah, in the present, because there are presently future tense propositions, past tense propositions. God can look at them and see their truth value. So Now, I think that's completely misconceived. <laughs> As I say, his knowledge isn't like perception, but for those who are wedded to this idea of perception they seem to have forgotten about these propositions that exist that God could look at and inspect. But does that mean that in the theory of time that past, present, and future are all real, God could perceive everything, but in the theory that time is a becoming and the past is over and the future has not yet come, that God then has to know the future through some innate mechanism. I think that the analogy of perception works on the, the tenseless view of time where everything is equally real. But that analogy of perception is flawed when it comes to the view of time as dynamic.